Hey there, 3D Engineers. So uh, bringing you today, what is going to keep me healthy uh, and keep my body in shape while I'm getting ready for my powerlifting right meet, correct? Uh, that's my big goal. Uh, it's not to set new PRs. It's not to uh, to break records. You know, I'm not even thinking that I'm gonna to, going to win uh, when it comes to my competition. I just want to show up to the meet and compete. And in order to do that, I've got to stay healthy, right? So we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about warm up. All right. We're going to talk about the workup uh, of each um, ascending warm up set to the, the to the heavy uh, work for the day, the heavy lifts for the day. And then we're going to talk lastly uh, about uh, prehab, preventative stuff, I guess you might say. All the things that are going to keep me healthy being that I'm 52 years old and, and, and fighting some old injuries, right? So first of all, let's start about warm up for the day. Let's start there, right? Um, got some uh, footage here for you guys here today. Um, and this is my spreadsheet that I create for, um, you know, all of our clients here at 3DMJ when we have to think about prehab and, and warm up and things like that. So we're going to start right here with warm up, all right? And whenever I prescribe something, I always prescribe something with intent. I, I prescribe something with a reason and what it is that, you know, uh, we want to accomplish with that. So first of all, right here, kind of to warm up the hips, glutes, uh, an aggravating groin injury that I've had for like 12 years and kind of dynamic stretching. That's the intent of, of this work here, right? Uh, basically, I start out every single day with what's called the bootstrapper squat. Get my shoes on, get my sleeves on, walk around the gym a little bit, move around. Here's the bootstrapper squat, okay? I learned this from um, Dan John uh, in my RKC days, all right? Um, and it's it's essentially done with a kettlebell. And you can just kind of see here, if I was to describe this to you, um, it wouldn't work. You wouldn't even know what I was talking about, right? Uh, stretches out the hamstrings, but in kind of a dynamic fashion, I'm not just dropping my butt down. I'm actually using my my hamstrings kind of like I'm doing a leg curl to pull my butt down. OK, gets the hips loosened up, uh, gets, you know, the knees kind of warmed up um, bootstrapper squat. OK, two to four reps with the 20 to 28 kg kettlebell. Uh, this is a 20 kg kettlebell that. Um, we've got here in the gym. It's the heaviest one that we've got here in the gym. So like two to four reps. Okay. Kettlebell is already sitting there. So then I just go right into a goblet squat. Okay. Four to 10 reps with that same kettlebell. Now trying to get the glutes firing, right? Get the glutes firing, kind of get the, 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 the squat pattern greased. Okay. Um, so yeah, just kind of back and forth. Bootstrapper squat, a few goblet squats, back into a bootstrapper squat, you know, something to the effect of this, that it just kind of depends on how, how hips and everything are, are feeling on, on that particular day. Right. Okay. Then, um, I get done with those. I will then go into what is called a Cossacks squat, right? This is a very difficult movement. And I really admire people that can kind of not only do a full on Cossack squat, but then can also kind of move back and forth from the right to the left. This is a very difficult movement and I have to do them assisted. Uh, I have to kind of hold on to something with one hand, uh, but this stretches out my adductors, kind of gets my groin warmed up as well as my knees, um, gets the calves stretched out. You can see there's a lot of um, ankle mobility there, a little ankle stretch that's going on there. Okay. And so, do about three reps on each side. And depending on how the day feels, I will sometimes kind of go back and forth. I'll do some caustic squats. I'll go back and do a couple of bootstrapper squats and a goblet squat. Back and do some some um, some caustic squat, right? Um, that's kind of typical, you know, as I'm kind of moving and, and, and getting things felt out as I might do a little bit more or less. Um, as I'm getting warmed up, right? Then as soon as I'm done with those, grab my kettlebell and I'll do about um, between five and 10, minimum five, hardly 10, but somewhere in there, good old fashioned hard style kettlebell swings. And by hard style, this is what I learned in from the Russian kettlebell challenge, right? The, the Russians do things a little bit harder 
um, than, than, than we typically do over here. And not this, not the American swing. You can kind of see here as I'm doing this, it's pretty fast and explosive and uh, hard style swing. You're actually using the lats to push down the kettlebell, uh, in addition to using the load, uh, as well as the inertia, right? So between five and 10 reps. And like I said, this, I might kind of do circuit style, um, as I'm, you know, kind of getting, uh, um, warmed up for the day. Okay. So this was the warm up uh, for um, squat and deadlift sessions, which, you know, as you can see here for the frequency, that's basically every day because I'm squatting and deadlifting all five days, five days a week. So I'm doing this basically prior to every single um, session. Okay. Um, not shown here, but one thing I do to keep my shoulders healthy and to keep my infraspinatus uh, strain at bay uh, is I start every bench or overhead press session with two sets of neutral grip cable pull downs. All right. And typically what I do is I use between 130 and 150 pounds load. I'll do a light effort set uh, of just roughly, you know, four to five repetitions. Okay. But then I will always do a second set to failure, sometimes a few post failure partials. OK, so that actually counts as lat work. I will actually kind of log that in my sheet. Uh, but many, many times and with many clients, too, you do a, a good set of, of pull downs, uh, maybe one or two sets. And the shoulder does not hurt when bench pressing believe it or not. Um, but yeah, that's what I will do prior to every bench press and every overhead um, session. Okay, so now moving on, let's talk about ascending warm-up sets or workups. I have a, um, a fairly good um, video on Instagram that covers this, okay? But before I get into that and kind of show you what I did on this particular day, I have a little spreadsheet that I create for many uh, of my power lifters um, that goes over each and every one of the warmups and it's right there on their attempt selection spreadsheet. So let me kind of shrink this down here a little bit. All right. And basically once you get done with the warmup and maybe just doing a quick set uh, of 135 pounds, you know, I like to just kind of do some partials just to kind of get the bar on my back and kind of get things grooved a, a little bit better. Uh, I will then use this attempt selection spreadsheet. OK, so you can see here it's pretty straightforward as you're working reps downward. All right. You work the weight upward. OK, so I'll just kind of show you here real quickly Four reps with 185 pounds. I know it's not 187 pounds like the spreadsheet says, but just kind of rounding things. OK, uh, get done with that. Three reps with 225. All right. Moving right along. Throw another quarter on each side. Two reps with 275. OK, then one or two reps on this particular day. Uh, I went ahead and just did two reps with 315. All right. And then basically, this is my last single, my last warm up, which is a single, before I start either my top singles for the day, or it's also what I will do before I go out on the actual platform and hit my opener. All right. And so this spreadsheet, I, I follow this every single day. Today, I'm just kind of showing you the squat. All right. But this is what I'm going to use at the meet and the back room, the warm up room is usually very busy. There's nerves involved. There's a lot going on and I want to kind of have practiced it many, many, many times. So I will do this every session, every week before um, I get to the meet. So it's just, it's, it's almost like, um, it's almost like breathing. I don't even have to think about it. Alrighty, folks. So now we went over warm up. We are gonna we went over workup. Now let's go over prehab. Right? Those are those things that are gonna keep me healthy, that don't necessarily you know contribute to um, 
the gains, the strength, but it just keeps me healthy. I call it prehab. Okay. Again, I've got intent. So to keep that right adductor and groin um, healthy, uh, I guess you might say just exposure therapy. Um, at the end of every squat or deadlift session, which basically means after every session right now, we start out with five to 10 minutes of walking slowly on a treadmill and I crank the, the incline up, okay? Two to three miles an hour, steep incline, 11 to 14 degrees. I'm not gonna show you that today, okay? Uh, that's pretty darn boring. But what I am going to show you is I have a unique way of using the, the stair mill. I guess it's actually the stair mill, right? So basically two and a half to five minutes, somewhere in there. I start out just, as you can see here, regular steps, right? Just regular steps. Two and a half to, to roughly five minutes uh, doing that, okay? But 50-50, I'll do 50% of the work doing regular steps like this. The other 50%, I will do skipping steps. So I slow the stair mill down and actually go two steps at a time, okay? Sometimes I can kind of feel this in the, the groin. Sometimes, I, most of the time I should say, I don't. But nonetheless, I feel like this makes the adductor and my groin fairly durable because as long as I keep on this, while I might feel it on the stair mill, I don't feel it squatting or deadlifting. All right. So this is after every deadlift session. Okay. Deadlift, actually, every, after every lower body session. Uh, in this case, I'm squatting and deadlifting every day. So it's after every single session. Okay. All right. So now getting back to my little prehab spreadsheet here. Um, I have had... Um, notorious issues with my ribs, with my scoliosis being quite prominent. Um, my ribs are almost touching uh, on that side. And so I usually have to do foam rolling for the lats, like three to 10 reps each side, you know, just kind of rolling back and forth, one rep, back and forth, two reps, etc. But I really only have to do that about once or twice uh, per training block. So I usually do it during deloads. All right. And then the shoulders. Okay. After every bench press or upper body session, um, I need to, you know, basically work with the club mill and do my 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 wood chopping, right? I was splitting wood before. That seemed to really help my shoulders. So here I've kind of set up the same thing um, with a club bell. All right. I call it wood chopping. And I did get permission from the owner uh, of the sandbag here. Uh, to, to beat on a sandbag, I've got a pretty thick um, piece of dense rubber on top of that. But basically, 20 reps each side. 20 reps, 10 reps on the right side, then switch. 10 reps on the left side, and then switch. And then 10 back and forth on each side uh, to finish it up. Okay, and that's after every upper body session. And I'm only benching about three to four times a week. So I'm only doing this about three to four times a week. Okay. All right, 3D and Jairs, that is my uh, warm up, my workup, and my prehab uh, that's going to keep me healthy, uh, keep me in the game, keep me training so that I can uh, show up uh, and compete, right? So close it with basically just kind of telling you these uh, kind of uh, little programs, these little spreadsheets. This is what uh, our clients get uh, when they you know sign up for coaching with us. Uh, power lifters, they get the workup and the attempt selection spreadsheet as well. So uh, it's not like this is just for me. This is what everybody gets, you know, when uh, they work with us uh, and are coached by 3DMJ. So a little plug there. All right, y'all. Take care now. Hope this has helped you.